What's the matter, babe? You can't sleep? Is there anything I can do to help? Tell you more about science. <laughs> really? You want to learn more? Okay, I can do that. Well, if you want to learn more, we need to talk about cells. Cells are... They're the smallest unit of life. Every living thing is a cell or made up of cells. Cells can make copies of themselves, replicate, and cells are like the building blocks of life. Something can either be a single-cell organism, like teeny tiny bacteria, or it can be a multicellular organism, like elephants and dogs and palm trees and human beings. Every living thing, plants and animals, are made up of cells, unless they're so small that they're just one cell. But we'll probably talk more about animal cells, because they're a bit more interesting and a bit more relevant. Those are the kind of cells that make up our bodies. So, where to start? Cells are like little rooms. In fact, that's actually where the name cell comes from. It means small room in Latin. And it's like a small room. It has a wall, kind of a bubble around it, and that's made up of fats called phospholipids. And that wall of fat is important because it repels water. It keeps water from rushing inside the cell and flooding everything, making the cell burst or taking away all the things inside the cell that you want. But it's also double-sided so that it keeps water in. Inside the cell is mostly water too, about 80% water. And that's important because it helps things mix together, it helps things get where they need to go. It's pretty vital, which is why we couldn't live without water. And planets that don't have water probably couldn't support life. So, there's a bubble of these phospholipids, and they repel water, kind of like how oil and water don't mix. They repel the water outside the cell, and they keep the water inside the cell. But it's like good water inside the cell and bad water outside the cell, if that makes sense. There are things inside the cell that you want to keep inside the cell, and you don't want things outside the cell from getting in, unless they're supposed to come in. In which case, there are these little channels through the wall that let in very particular things, but they need to be the right kind of things. So there's like border guards that check the passports very rigorously and make sure that only the things that are meant to go inside the cell are the things that go inside the cell. <laughs> See, inside the cell, there are these very specific conditions that need to be met. Otherwise, the cell dies. And whilst that's not such a big deal for you or I, if one cell dies, we have billions and billions more of them. But it's pretty important on a small scale, because that cell might have a very important job inside the body, and if one cell dies from something, other cells nearby are probably going to die too. And of course, if all you are is a cell, like a bacterium, then that's pretty bad if the conditions aren't right and you end up dying. <laughs> so, it needs to be very stable, very secure, it needs to be kept just right, so there's all kinds of processes that make sure the cell is functioning the way it should be. And a lot of those rely on the cell wall to keep bad things out and good things in. How it does that is pretty complex. But pretty much everything that happens in a cell is done by proteins. Proteins are like little machines. They can do all kinds of things. Some of them hold things together keep the wall safe and secure, hold structures together, reinforce things, some proteins move things around, some proteins cause chemical reactions, some proteins can destroy things or create things, all kinds of different functions. So proteins are really important, and 
There's lots of them. Like, lots of them in every single cell. And there are a lot of cells in your body. So there's even more proteins. And they do all kinds of things, and they're all made up of the same kinds of building blocks. And for the most part, at least, your cells make all of them by themselves. And the way they do that is they have a very, very complicated and detailed library inside the cell called the nucleus. And the nucleus is made up of DNA, which you may have heard of. It's like this blueprint for everything. Everything that you could possibly need in a cell, including the instructions on how to make a new cell, which is pretty important. But mostly DNA is a huge library of blueprints that tell you how to make all sorts of different proteins in all sorts of different ways, in all sorts of different conditions and scenarios. It's a really, really important library. And it's also really, really complicated. And it's really, really big. But because of the clever way that it's organized, all of that information for billions of billions of proteins are condensed into a very teeny tiny space. All the information is contained in this weird twisted ladder or a spiral staircase kind of pattern of DNA. And then that DNA wraps itself up into these weird kind of X-shaped things called chromosomes, which you may have heard of. They're like different shelves of the library, sort of. Anyway, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of information in there on how to make all the proteins that you could possibly need. But it's very important to keep that library safe, so not just anyone's allowed in there. The DNA library, the nucleus, it's like a separate cell inside the cell, like a little pocket that keeps things safe because you really don't want to lose the DNA. If you do, then the cell has no idea what it's doing or how to get what it needs. Plus, the thing about DNA is that it's pretty sensitive to change. So if something bad happens and the DNA gets damaged, that can have some pretty severe repercussions. Not only is it possible that you might lose something that you need, Changes might get made to the DNA, which means that instead of making the thing you needed, you make something bad, something that might make problems, something defective, or something that misbehaves, that causes lots of damage to the cell, all kinds of things. So you need to keep it safe. You need to keep it shut away from the rest of the cell, where there's all sorts of construction going on, and chemical processes, and all things like that. So it's tucked away in this little pocket called the nucleus. And there are these specific kinds of machines that go into the library and find the blueprint that they need for a particular protein, and then they make a copy of it. And then they take it outside of the nucleus into the rest of the cell, called the cytoplasm. But not everything in the rest of the cell knows how to read the language that DNA is written in, so it gets translated into a different kind of language that the protein-making machines know how to read. So, you've got a big library of DNA, and all the different blueprints are set up into these different kinds of sections, kind of like individual books, and they're called genes. A gene is a particular section of DNA that encodes for a specific protein. So you want to make a particular protein, you find where the gene is in the DNA, and then you make a temporary copy of that. And that temporary copy is made of something called mRNA or messenger RNA. RNA is like the simpler little brother of DNA. It doesn't last as long, it's not nearly as stable, but that's okay, because it's meant to be temporary. If you had a copy of it lying around outside in the cell, then a protein-making machine could stumble upon it and keep making that protein over and over and over and over again and make way too much of it. So you actually want it not to last too long. Because protein-making machines, called ribosomes, they're actually kind of dumb. They don't really control themselves terribly well. They just make whatever they read. So you want the message to degrade after it's been made enough. Otherwise, it'd just keep making it forever and ever, and you'd have way too much protein, and you'd use up all sorts of resources, and it would be bad. So this temporary copy, called messenger RNA, 
gets taken outside of the nucleus back into the cytoplasm. Then it gets translated into a language that the protein manufacturing machines, called ribosomes, can read. Because again, they're kind of dumb. So, the mRNA is translated into something called tRNA, or transfer RNA, which is like a different kind of language that the ribosomes can read. It tells them where to put all the pieces and how to make what they need to make. This tRNA message tells the ribosome to make the protein that it needs to make. It tells it where all the bits and pieces go and how to make the protein right. This is a really important step because if there's any errors in the message, the ribosomes will make the wrong kind of protein. It may not be that big a deal if there's only a small error, then the protein might still do what it needs to do, or maybe it'll just be kind of useless and it'll get destroyed. But if there's a big change, the protein that gets made could be really different, and it could act differently, and it could do different things, and maybe it'll wreck up the cell, destroy things, or move things where they're not meant to be, create a mess. It can be a real problem. And that's what a genetic disease is. If you have some kind of mutation in your gene, which is basically a change that shouldn't be there, then the blueprints for that gene are going to be a little bit wrong. And the ribosome will make that protein with an error in it. And that error might not be a big deal, but it could also be a big deal. And a protein that you need to survive, or at least to be healthy, might not be working the way it's meant to. So you may end up with some kind of health problem as a result. Anyway, the tRNA message has a series of letters in it. It's kind of an abstract concept, and it doesn't really matter that much. But each three letters, which is called a codon in the tRNA message, tells the ribosome where to put a particular building block in the growing protein. And these building blocks are called amino acids, which you might have heard of. You might also know them by another name, vitamins. Vitamin is actually short for vital amine, or vital amino acid. They're an amino acid, or a building block for proteins, that your body doesn't make by itself. So, you need to get it from food. And that's why vitamins are so important. Because you need them to be able to make the proteins that your cells need to do all sorts of important things. If you aren't getting enough of that vitamin, then your body won't be able to make the things it needs. So vitamin deficiencies can be pretty important things. You need to make sure that you have all the building blocks available to make all the different kinds of proteins that your cells need. <laughs> anyway, this protein gets made by the ribosome, which is in itself actually a whole bunch of different proteins working together in a kind of complex. It's like a little factory. They're proteins, and they make proteins themselves. <laughs> they add on amino acids, one at a time, and the kind of chemical interactions between all those amino acids make the protein grow and shift and change and curve and bend, and it has a really weird, complex, three-dimensional shape. So small changes, even a single building block that's wrong, could make really, really big changes on a zoomed-out, three-dimensional scale. And that's why getting even one amino acid wrong is important, because it can stop a protein from folding into the right shape. And if a protein isn't in the right shape, it might not be able to do the thing that it needs to do. It could be something that encourages chemical reactions to happen. It could be something that holds things together. It could be a little pocket that destroys things or creates things. It could be a messenger. It could be all sorts of things. But it usually relies on its shape, and its shape is determined by chemical interactions on a very, very small level. So if you have some kind of genetic disorder, or you don't have the vitamins that you need to make the protein the way it should be made, then you can have some really big problems inside your cells. And even though a cell is really small, that can potentially have big consequences for your entire body. Anyway, once a protein gets made, it gets sent to this particular area of the cell called the Golgi body, or the Golgi apparatus. Kind of a weird name, I know. And this is kind of like the post office of the cell. 
It packages up proteins in a little bubble, and it sticks a little stamp on them, saying where the protein needs to go, and then it ships off that protein, telling it to go to the cell wall and keep things intact, or go to this other area of the cell and go do some chemical reactions, or whatever that protein's for. It's a pretty neat system. There's all sorts of different areas inside the cell. Things called organelles. They're like the organs in your body. They do different things that the cell needs to survive. You might have heard of one in particular called mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. <laughs> it's true. Mitochondria are particular organelles that make energy for the cell. Energy that's used in all sorts of ways, including building things. <laughs> it powers everything, and they are indeed very important. <laughs> There's all sorts of other areas and all sorts of interesting things that goes on inside the cell, but I don't want to overwhelm you with complexity. Still, hopefully you've learned something about cells and how they work. <laughs> if you ever want to learn more, you can always ask. <laughs> but for now, how about we cuddle up together, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Mm. It's really nice teaching you things. I'm glad you like it. Mm. I'll teach you whatever you want to know. Anytime. You just say the word, okay? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, we'll take a little study break. You can cuddle up with me. Mm. It's so nice to have you in my arms. <laughs> yeah. How about we get some sleep together, darling? Yeah? Hmm. <laughs> 